what I love about President Abbas's speeches is they always have like a, a translator, a woman's voice, so it sounds like a woman is speaking. Because for some reason he thinks that everybody speaks Arabic in the UN. God is with us. God is with us, of course. Of course there's God with us. Uh, he's burning down, the Palestinians are burning, sent to burn down fields and destroy wildlife and kill animals um, just because they're on the Israeli side. But God is with them. Of course, God loves to see turtles and wildlife burn. And not to mention Palestinian children uh, having to fight. So there's a state of Palestine. I didn't realize that. So he mentions God quite a few times. Whatever you say about Prime Minister Netanyahu, he doesn't mention God. Uh, I think God wasn't mentioned at all. Ah, no, he did mention the biblical promised land and. Um, the Bible is a manuscript after all. Whether you choose to believe it is God inspired or not is your business, but it, it is um, the bestseller. He quoted the Bible. But uh, this guy has a God, he has his own little God that loves and is on the Palestinian side. If God is on the Palestinian side, how come um, they need military aid from America? Well, for that, we don't have an answer. For freedom, independence, and justice for my oppressed people who are suffering under the yoke of the Israeli occupation for more than 51 years. And today I return as this colonial occupation continues to suffocate us. So the Palestinians have suffered from the colonial occupation more than 51 years. Okay, let's talk about history a little bit. Uh, Islam started more than 600 years after Christ, after the Common Era, let's say. Uh, Judaism started 3,000 years ago. So do the number check. Who colonized who? Um, there is absolutely clear evidence in archaeology of a Jewish... Uh, um, culture thousands of years ago and sadly the Palestinians didn't leave any manuscripts maybe everything was oral I don't know um, but as far as I know the, the people that are now called Palestinians came from the Arab Peninsula from Syria Lebanon um, according to evidence given uh, there were not that many of them living in uh, what's called Palestine before the Jews wanted the land. Then all of a sudden they all like be became a very popular place. And let's not forget that um, to call somebody a colon colonial, okay, let's see, colonial, all right. So, my ancestors came from Ukraine hundred more than 150 years ago. They were Ukrainians and the fact that they lived there. They were not allowed to own land. They did not have the rights that people have here, for instance, or any democracy. And they were often abused and murdered. So are they, are they representing Ukraine? I mean, am I a colon, like I'm like a Ukrainian taking over Arab land? I don't think so. The Ukrainians didn't recognize Jews as um, having the same rights as Ukrainians uh, at that time when the many Jews came from Ukraine and Russia. Same thing with Russia. They did not have equal rights. They were not exactly able to colonize anything since they were not like there were not Russians or Ukrainians like other Russians and Ukrainians. There were sub sub um, citizens. So the whole argument of being colonials is absurd. And he studied in Russia. He should know that. If he knows anything about Russian history, the Jews were not equal citizens. They were subhuman. They were you were allowed to kill them and murder them. 
and um, which is why the Arabs also allowed them themselves to do the same thing because the Jews were not considered human beings of equal rights still not anyone selling land as Prime Minister Netanyahu said is um, is executed anybody selling land to Jews or land to Jews is executed under Palestinian uh, law so much for God being uh, really nice and just the other point is okay my other side came from Slovakia okay they had to give up their citizenship. They had to give up their businesses. They did not have rights because they were occupied by Nazis. Even before that, their rights were kind of uh, kind of dependent on the ruler. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Even now, I do not have a Slovakian passport. Though generations and generations of my family lived, they had very good education. They were lawyers and educated people, but they didn't have the same rights as Slovakian people. They could be sent out from the country at any time, their businesses could have been taken over. So to present Jews as people that are colonial, col colonists, sorry, colonists, is that the right term? Is distortion of history. You have to know the history of the Jews to realize that there's no way Jews can be col colonial colonists. As for the American Jews that come here, there are only 2% of them at the US. And the ones that come have a very strong, mostly, I think they have a very strong religious um, beliefs. They come, they, they don't mean to establish an American colony. They actually feel they're more Jewish than American, which is why they're willing to risk their lives and live in settlements. Um, whatever you say about settlements, and I, I definitely agree it, it's not a clear uh, situation. Um, there's no American Jew that comes here in order to establish an American colony. They wish to integrate and wish to go back to the, being Jews in their land. They don't wish to be Americans on, on um, Palestinian territory. So this is completely... Um, uh, baseless, it has no historical or logical uh, argument. It's, it, Jews are not colonists. They have no colony. They have, they have no mother country which they represent in the Middle East. So this is absurd argument. Let's continue. unwavering efforts to build the institutions of our cherished state, which... They're making efforts to build institutions, really. Is that why you put rockets in your schools? Is that why you send children uh, to throw firebombs and burn down fields and animals? Is that how you're going to build a nice, just society? Teaching children to burn down uh, wildlife reserves. Is that, is that how you teach them? That's interesting. I don't think that's very educational. And maybe that explains the dire situation of education and infrastructure and economy in the Palestinian territories under your rule. So let's skip, skip. They are committing acts of blasphemy against our holy sites, especially Al-Aqsa Mosque. Oh, great. We are committing, Israel is committing uh, acts of violence against our holy sites, Al-Aqsa. For once and for all, Al-Aqsa was the, the place of the ancient temple of the Jews. There are archaeological evidence to that. Islam came into the Middle East in the years, more than 600 years after the Common Era. How in the world is the, the holy sites are in Saudi Arabia? Islam is in Mecca and Medina, which are in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia doesn't allow any Jews, so Jews cannot hurt the holy places of Islam since Jews cannot be allowed in Saudi Arabia. Thank you very much. Let's move to the next argument. So they are victims, Vic innocent victims, 
they don't pay tourist money, thousands of dollars. So let's skip this. Um, and combating terrorism, as well as to also demonstrate that the Congress legislation regarding the PLO is arbitrary, have also concluded with 83 other countries. We have protocols with 83 countries under the heading or the title of combating terrorism, including the United States. However, the Congress calls us terrorists. Why do the Congress call us terrorists, he asks, when there's more than 80 countries recognizing us, he asks. Well, maybe it's because you pay people to murder other people. I wouldn't call you terrorists, I would call you like mafia. I don't know what you call gangs. What kind of people pay people to just go on, attack citizens that have done nothing to you, just strangers on the street, just because they are Jews. They're, I wouldn't, I would call them neo-Nazis maybe, not, I wouldn't call them terrorists. Despite of all this, and from this august platform, Okay, Israel doesn't respect UN resolution. Let's start from 1948. There was supposed to be an Arab state and a Jewish state, but all you guys got together, all you guys, all the Arab countries, surrounding Arab countries, and the Arabs, including the Arabs in this, this territory that was supposed to be divided into two states, and decided to wage a war and try to murder the Jewish population and to take over the, the, the land that was by the UN allocated to be the Jewish state. So let's start with the 1948 declaration, which you, didn't, you did not respect, and you acted in violence consistently we have to say he's very consistent he's very consistent he sticks to the point he he you know they they constantly believe in violence and destruction of the state of israel so i gotta give him points for being consistent but he forgets that 1948 declaration was not respected by the arabs who could have had a state had they not used their energy and resources to try to destroy the jewish state instead of build an arab state negotiations and solutions. What kind of solutions? Peace in our region cannot be realized without an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. Wait, 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 wait. Peace cannot be allowed without a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. Well, if you claim a real estate, what proof do you have? You have how many, how many holy cities do you actually need? I mean, Jerusalem is not mentioned once in the Quran. People say it and repeat it, and yet you continue to, to say East Jerusalem is yours. Under which claim exactly? The Jews had lived there thousands of years before you guys ever got there, wandering from the Arab Peninsula, Lebanon, and Syria. They were living there in civilized areas and territories, cities, long before you ever did. The city was established by Jews, and it was a Jewish city that was conquered again and again by foreign armies, but to actually claim it is yours? Under which uh, right? By the way, Jordan occupied it from 1948 to 1967. East Jerusalem was under Jordanian occupation. Why didn't you ask then for a Palestinian state? When exactly did the Palestinian claims begin? Ah after the Jordanians were out of the picture, all of a sudden they became a nation. Very interesting. So what kind of a nation starts to be a nation uh, when the when it's under different occupation? I mean, what is this? Like, uh, what is it? There's an animal that changes its color, right? So it's like you change your nationality. First of all, you were not a nation. And then when the, when the Israelis took over East Jerusalem, all of a sudden you became a nation called Palestinians. And then you wanted East Jerusalem as your capital. 
Well, why didn't you ask the Jordanians for, for it to be your capital? Why didn't you ask the Jordanians? No. Well, I got a guy. So, anyway, I don't know. I'm going to stop here. I think you have enough information. It's 15 minutes and I'm getting tired. So, anyway, I think I heard enough of this speech and. Uh, Basically, he's not looking for a solution. He's always the same, the same old, same old. And uh, it's really sad for both uh, people because I think there should be peace. There should be a solution. And they should go back to the 1948 UN Declaration of Two States uh, within uh, whatever borders they negotiate. But uh, Jerusalem is not to be divided. There's no reason to give it away to people who have no religious or ethnic or historical claims to it. I mean, there's, you know, if you want to go on a legal battle, you need to have documents proving your cause. So, prove it. Show that in the Quran, Jerusalem is mentioned one time. And then um, you can't have all three cities as your holy centers and the Jews none. So, peace, light, and love. And let's hope that the people amongst them will get along. And that uh, somehow there will be leaders that seek uh, to live uh, together in peace without these leaders. <laughs>